Okay, uh, page 162, number 51, 85, 87, 92, 95, 96, 98, 113, 154, 172, 183. Oh yeah, some of these are hard. And then the ones you today, it was like more. That is 163, number 123, 126, 131, 135, and 65. Okay, and so for the other classes watching this video, you had these all together in one big homework, I think. I'm starting to slightly lose my mind, but I think that's right. All right, so let's do some of these, not all of them. Which ones were good? Which ones are good? 172, 173. Yeah, these are just like some famous good problems. How about, um, what else? 165. 165. What was that all about? Oh, yeah, that's kind of interesting. Oh, I signed that? I think I meant not to. Oh, well. Um, let's do some other ones that are kind of like fun. What else do we do? Four. Should we do some like, um, oh, let's do 98. Did I sign 96? Do 96 and 98, and or let's do 95 and 98. Maybe like one or two more. Um, let's do 123 and 135. How's that sound? Nice representative sample. All right, good. Um, can you stop talking? Um, good. Ninety-five. Um, could you ever tell the story about how? Um, like they're talking. I'm just sitting here and I get yelled at. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the thing is, you deserve it. Um, so, we are taking the ln of the absolute value of sine x. Anyway, the story is that when I was like a little kid, um, I got, I just could not shut up. Uh, what? That's your little brother. your little brother? Yeah, I think it was because my parents were too nice to me. They were like hippies and they just like raised me. A little bit of a like classic Jewish situation. They're like, oh, he's so funny. And they were just like, every single little thing I said, they're like, oh, that was so great, that was so great, that was so great. So I just got an um, inflated ego and I just thought everything I said was brilliant. Um, so I just never shut up in class. I couldn't sit still. I was just like that boy who was just like, couldn't sit still. I had all kinds of behavior packs with my teacher. Like about how, when I was allowed to like get up and stuff. Anyway, um, so the point is, I got a bad reputation as just someone who was just it was always my fault. And then there was this moment in third grade where this is a life changing event, um, where I learned that life is not fair. Um, and basically, some crap went down, and it was totally not my fault, and I got just totally blamed for it. And no matter whatever kinds of logic I tried to use. They just didn't care, and it was it was ridiculous, and it was all about this. Um, some kid drew this naked picture. <laughs> that was very popular in third grade. So some kid drew this naked picture, and then um, everyone was looking at it. It was not me. Um, and then um, and then someone started a rumor that it was actually a naked picture of this other girl. So then this girl got really upset because it was supposed to supposedly a picture of her. And then this then this other kid took possession of it not the artist, and he decided that he was going to sell it to whoever wanted to buy it. And he was offering to sell it. And then the girl said, I want to get that picture out of circulation. So then she got some other kid to buy it, and then she like ripped it. Anyway, and then, the, then it got the picture ended up with the principal, and then three people got called into the principal's office. One, the artist. Two, the person who was offering to sell it. And me, for no reason. And I was just like, I was like, what role did I have? They were just like, no one could be sure how I figured into it, but somehow I got blamed also. Um, it was terrible. And then met much conversations between me and my parents and teachers and, I don't know. Anyway, I can't remember how it, how it turned out. All right. Good. The point is, Kinjo, when you're doing enough wrong things and you just get blamed for everything all the time. And I probably deserved it, and so do you. So stop talking. Good. All right. What is... How do we differentiate ln of absolute value of sine? Oh, okay, side note, I'm glad we're going over this. Because usually I talk about this in a previous lecture, but I forgot this time. And that is, how do I differentiate, uh, how do we take the derivative of 
the natural log of the absolute value of this function. What is this? Um, this seems like a kind of a silly question, but is in fact sort of an important question. Someone have a, some, say something smart about this. La 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 la. Can you? Well, I looked it up online and it said that the um, derivative of absolute value of x is x over absolute value of x. Uh, that's true. That's true, but I don't know. That's like not. I mean, makes sense. Oh, that's what you're gonna say too? Yeah, that so makes sense. No, wait, hold on. Let's take care of let's do this yeah, properly. How do we how do we draw a picture? Okay, that's actually one way. Um what is the ln of the absolute value? Is this what I want to do? Yeah, sure. What does the natural log of the absolute value of x look like? Yeah, Sam, this is some this is like an advanced pre calc topic, right? Ln of absolute value looks like when x is positive, it's the same. Normally, I can't plug negative numbers into, please focus. Normally, I can't plug negative numbers into the natural log function, but I can, in this case, plug negative numbers in, right? And when I plug negative numbers in, what do I get back? Like, what I would have done if I plugged in the positive version. So what we actually end up with is like, remember the, you guys did this stuff in pre-calc okay? Yeah, and now have you, have you seen this function before? Not, it's not a bird, it's, it's, sort of, it's some sort of bird. Um, this it's is, you may recognize this function as existing on the top left hand corner of your sketching derivatives worksheet. Uh -huh. And so you have already actually sketched the derivative of this function using common sense, what should the derivative of this function be? Well, it should be a huge positive number, then it should be like one, then it should be a tiny positive, so like that. But then over here, the derivative should be like a tiny negative, that negative one, then a huge negative. Do you agree? And so it's going to be like a, yeah, it's going to be like a that situation. In other words, it looks strongly like it's actually just 1 over x. Okay, but we need to be serious about this. This class is called analysis because we are like, actually I don't even know why. But um, uh, let's, let's, take the, let's take the absolute value seriously. How do we take the absolute value seriously? I've been like saying this only 1,000 times since I met you all. Yes. One word. Piecewise. Yeah, piecewise, cases, exactly. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll consider the two. What we will really do is we will rewrite ln of absolute value of x without the absolute value. Well, if x is positive, then uh, then ln of absolute value of x is just ln of x, agree? But what if, if x is negative, what is ln of absolute value x? ln of negative x, because that's how the absolute value function works. The absolute value function says if the inside is positive, keep it as it is. If the inside is negative, replace it with the opposite. And so do you agree that this is just that function? Yeah. So yes. Okay, and so what we're really doing is we're differentiating this piecewise function, and when we do that, what do we get? What is the derivative of ln x? So I get 1 over x when x is positive. Are you following all this? What, do I, what is the derivative of ln of negative x? I couldn't answer that question before, but now I know the chain rule. What is it? Wait, what's the derivative of ln of negative x, everybody? It's also 1 over x, right? Because it's the derivative of ln of something is 1 over the something back inside for the derivative of the something, which is negative 1. And so, you see what's going on here? I get, I get 1 over x if x is positive, and I also get 1 over x if x is negative. Thus, my conclusion is that the derivative of the ln of absolute value of x is just 1 over x, which is heavily suggested by my picture, which you already made before you knew what you were doing. All right, good. Thus, when I differentiate ln of something, it's just 1 over the something, and you don't need to worry about cases. I now just like have a rule in general. Follow, follow? Good. We differentiate this. What happens? dy dx is the derivative of ln of something is, or the derivative of ln of absolute value of something is, I now know, just 1 over the something back inside for the derivative of something, which is cosine. Whoa, that's just tan. Was anyone that's surprised by that? Oh, yeah. that's, that's, cotan. Cotan. that's probably cotan. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's cotan, yes. Oh, couldn't we also just have done it just by chain rule? But that's harder. I think I did do the chain rule, right? Well, yeah, it's like just like a double chain rule with absolute. Yeah, I think it's easier just to, well, I don't know. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's kind of cool. Um, so that was 95. 98 is a similar thing. 
Um, this was y equals the ln of the absolute value of secant x plus tan x. Strange and weird function. How do we differentiate it? Answer very carefully. So this, the derivative of the ln of the absolute value of something is I now know 1 over the something back inside for the derivative of the something. What is the derivative of secant x plus tan x? Well, the derivative of secant, is you guys memorizing these by now? Secant x tan x plus the derivative of tan secant squared x. Awesomeness. Uh, okay, okay. So what? I could stop there or I could do something cool. Yes, Sam. Factor secant out of the thing. Yeah, if I factor secant x out of the top, then I get tan x plus secant x over secant x plus tan x. Whoa. I get secant from the bottom. What? What? No. Will it take out No, it's Did you guys realize that? Yeah. When you were doing this? Yeah, all right. So, um, Raphael, this is like a weird, this is a weird function, which looks like who would possibly care about such a function, yet its derivative is secant. I put that little fact in the back of your mind somewhere. Um, good. More. We do more. Going in order of numbers for the benefit of the other class, screw you guys. Um, what's 123? This was a relatively simple uh, problem based on what we learned yesterday. What is the derivative of the 4 to the x function? Are you guys just doing it with like just memorizing it? It's fine with me, I suppose. The derivative of 4 to the x is? 4 to the x times ln 4. Okay, awesome. How about 135? 135 was y equals log base 5 of root x squared minus 1. Looks kind of annoying. All right, how do you guys do this? Do you just memorize the formula or do you do the change of base formula? Change of base. All right, Dawson says change of base. So that means rewriting this as ln of x squared minus 1 to the 1 half over ln 5. Like that? Now, and actually, I could even do one more thing, right? I could write that, I could bring down the 1 half. So if I bring down the 1 half, I get that this is really um, 1 half over ln 5 times the ln of x squared minus 1. Are you getting this? Um, all are there boys' heads in the way? Yeah, you can see it. Okay, cool. So now I differentiate what is dy dx. It's going to be just, that's just a constant, so 1 over 2 ln 5 times the derivative of ln of x squared minus 1 is the derivative of ln of something, 1 over the something, back inside for the derivative of the something, which is 2x. So my final, final answer is, 1 over ln 5 times 2x over x squared minus 1. How do we feel about this? Yo, Raphael. Did I mess up? No, no. But the ln of x squared minus 1 is 2. 2 is canceled. Sorry, what? The ln of x squared minus 1 could be simplified as the ln x plus 1 plus ln x minus 1. Dawson. Is that like cooler? Okay, potentially cooler says Raphael, is that we could write this as, oh, well, I see what you're doing, as 1 over 2 ln 5 times, he says, write that, write x squared minus 1 as ln x minus 1, ln x plus 1. So that's really like ln x plus 1 plus ln x minus like that. Yeah. And now differentiate. I don't know if this is actually easier, but it's worth mentioning. Uh, so that's 1 over ln um, 25 times 1 over x plus 1 plus 1 over x minus 1. That's kind of cool. And those should be the same thing, hopefully. Who knows? All right. Uh, let's do more harm problems. 165, which was from yesterday's homework, I guess? No, it was from today's homework. 165. Oh, and I don't feel like talking about this yet. You want to? Anyway? Okay, sure, we can do it. If air is being pumped into a spherical balloon so that the radius is increasing at the rate of... 
I'm going to spend one minute talking about this. If you don't get it, I don't care. We're going to move on. Because we're going to do this more completely. Not today? Not today. I kind of just decided that I don't feel like doing this. Well, all right, whatever. We'll just do it. Um, but I didn't mean to assign this problem. So dr dt is 3. In other words, the rate at, no, I don't feel like doing this problem. If you got it, if you understood it, then you're awesome. If you did it, we're going to do it later. Um, all right, 172. Uh, let's do 172 and 173 from the previous homework that was due Monday. All right, 172 is like a little bit tricky because there were these graphs involved, right? It was annoying? Did you have to draw it? I mean, I have to draw it in order to go over it. But. All right, and so here is what we had. We had this one graph G, which was like flat until 2, 4, and then went up to 6, 6. So, jump, and then, stop talking. And then that's 6, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6. Jump. That was the G function. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm not. Then there was the F function, which looked like this, and then went up to 6, 5. So that was 6, 5, and like, etc. This is the F. All right. And this is like a sort of an abstract question to see if you really understand the chain rule. What was given to you were two functions, R of x. R of x was f of g of x. And s of x is uh, g of f of x. And then you, what you were asked to do is to find r prime of 1 and s prime of 4. All right, well, the way to do this is to differentiate this using the chain rule. So what is r prime of x in general via the chain rule? It is f prime of g of x back inside g prime of x. And so if what they want is r prime of 1, r prime of 1 is going to be f prime of g of 1 times g prime of 1. The, the um, AP exam is really fond of these questions. Um, so, uh, well, how do I interpret this? What is g of 1? When I look at g of 1, g of 1 is 4. And thus what I really want is f prime of 4 times g prime of 1 and f prime of 4, you move the camera, right? Yep. f prime of 4, at 4, what is the slope of this little piece here? Well, I go like up 2 over 4, so that slope is 1 half, right? So this is 1 half, and what's g prime of 1? g prime of 1 is 0, that's kind of stupid. So the answer is 0, is that what you got? Yeah. Okay, good. Now the other part gives you the function s. s is, um, s is, g of f of x, and so we can differentiate that. When we differentiate that, we get g prime of f of x back inside f prime of x. So that's, and then they want s prime of 4. s prime of 4, so that's g prime of f of 4 times f prime of 4. Well, f of 4 is, I guess it's 4, right? No. What's going on? It's about half. Oh, well, it's like a gross number, right? Yeah. Five halves? Really? No, it's five, five, four, five, four. This is like hard. What's the slope of this thing? Five four. The slope of this thing is, is I go up six, no, up five over four. Slope is five fourths. So if I, wait, slope is five fourths? Yeah. Slope is, so slope is five fourths. Thus, if I go over 2, I'm going to go up 5 halves. So it's 5 halves. Boom. Isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's 5 halves. The number you're talking about. Yeah, it's like 2 and a half. Yeah. So half of 4 is 2.5. Are you following this? Should be. All right, what is g prime of 2.5? g prime of 2.5 is going to be the slope of this line, which we already agreed was 1 half. So this is going to be 1 half times f prime of 4, which is, we already agreed, 5 fourths. So I got 5 eighths. Is that the right answer? Oh, it wasn't even, so there was suspense. But Dawson, that's what Dawson got? 
pretty much like I was right. All right, good. That was 172. Raise your hand if you got this right. Okay, it was some. If you got it wrong, what happened? What happened? I have no idea. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, good. Let's try 173. This was a cool problem. Show that the derivative of an odd function is even and the derivative of an even function is odd. You had actually a homework problem a long time ago that asked you to like conjecture this via sketch. Um, so, uh, let's do it. This is, like a, this is like a classic problem. It's just easy, but it's just hard for you guys because you're just going to experience like, doing things in general like this. So what we, what we want to do is show, it's just a matter of like notation. Show that the derivative of an even function is odd. And the derivative of an odd function is even. Okay. What should we tell me how to start? Just do it. Start with the definition of even. Yeah, that seems like a great idea. Start with the definition of an even function. So let f be an even function. Okay, well, by the definition of even, what is the definition of even? f of negative x is equal to negative f of x. The definition of an even function is that f of negative x equals f of x, right? So that's what I know about even functions. What's up? Instead of like doing math, we just like talk about the problem and make some graphs and like. Okay, yeah, we can do that, I guess. Mm -hmm. You want to do that? It's like not as good. Okay, so go talk. I mean, an even function. You can just do math. Okay, fine. Can we just do yeah. the math? <laughs> Good. Um, you had your chance, but then you you, you, you hesitated. All right, so let f be even function, so f of negative x equals f of x. Okay, now what do I need to do? I need to show that the derivative of this is odd. So what I need to actually show uh, is that f prime of negative x equals negative f prime of x. Do you guys agree with that as the goal statement? Because that is, after all, the definition of even, or odd. Uh, okay, so how do I actually do it? I guess I just, well, actually, what well, should I do? Because I don't know what you're going to say. Yeah, my part. Can you just use the chain rule to do the f of something and the negative? Pretty much, yeah. Just take this line, take this line that says f of x equals f of negative x, and just differentiate both sides. If we take the derivative on the left is f prime of x, and the derivative on the right, well, what is the derivative of f of negative x? He says via the chain rule, it's like what we did with ln a second ago, right? The derivative of f of negative x is f prime of negative x back inside negative 1. So am I just already done pretty much? Yeah. I pretty much am, right? Because thus I just showed that f prime of negative x is indeed negative f prime of x if I just multiply both sides by negative 1. And that was my goal all along, because by the definition of odd, it's odd. Follow? It was really just being careful and like using definitions and writing things down. Um, wait, Raphael said he was going to do something cool with like, talk to me. Then, then you get a minus h in there, right? Yeah, but then you have uh, then you put the h on the top operator. You know that when you take out the h, it's negative. <laughs> okay, so wait, the limit is h goes to zero of. So, uh, so I think what he's saying is write that as f of negative x minus h. Well, in a minute it's going to be yeah. Uh, and now he's saying, use the fact that f is even, since f is even, this is the same thing as f of x minus h minus f of x all over h. And it's kind of like plus h minus h, who cares, right? Same thing. It's negative, negative f of x minus h. But why? Oh, yeah, never mind. 
Well, actually, I think I just did I just messed this up, or it's right. That's right. This just turns into f prime of x. That's not what I expected. Uh, okay, 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 okay. So now you're doing. Now you're like letting h be negative h. Okay. All right, yeah, so it's just limit h to zero. So he says substitute for h negative h. So this becomes f of x plus h minus f of x all over like negative h, like that? Interesting. So that turns out to be negative f prime of x, which is what we wanted. Whoa. OK, cool. Um, but I think it was meant to be like just done via the chain rule, because it's like easy that way. All right, I'm going to have both of these homework. Um, somewhere with student has gone, so we'll just put it right here in two little files. Yeah. If you do it all in one piece of paper, can you write a note on the top saying like, I got you write a note on the top saying like this. Oh, you're going to. Oh. <laughs> Name it. Name it. Room number. Was he filming when he told his story? <laughs> right. That's what we're doing. We have nine minutes. All right. Um, good. In the last eight minutes of class, we will take out. Did I give you guys a worksheet on Friday? No. Oh, good. I'll give it to you now. So, classwork. Um, can you turn on? Oh, so wait. Um, so, bye. Lecture 13. Okay, hit it.